And the director never told me, well, just go out and have, you know, just make it up. No, the director would say to me, he'd say, watch what they're doing and follow their lead. Because they, they knew what they were doing. So he's telling me, watch what they're doing and follow their lead. That's what a director does. He doesn't do as in the case of the girl in a scene where she's with Harrelson, you know, Brie Larson, and she's leaving, she's walking, leaving, she just keeps leaving and she keeps leaving. Like, when are they going to stop me? And she thinks they're going to stop her. So I talk to myself, when are they going to stop me? And, the, and she just walked off and then somebody went, somebody went and grabbed her. Because she was leaving, you know, she's like, I'm going to have to walk all the way home. They're not going to stop me. And the second one, the, a scene that wasn't written into it was uh, the girls in the kitchen that they filmed for hours with just the two girls doing girl talk. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't there either. You just let them go. You can't let people go because um, uh, this is what a lot of people, a young film people, don't understand. Mm -hmm. It goes back to George M. Cohan. Why must the show go on? Because you don't get paid if it doesn't. It is. Sh you put it. This is show so business. business. And they. Mm -hmm. It's just like um, you're looking at um, modern filmmakers are. Oh God. You're know, like these guys are all in their late 40s and 50s, like um, George Clooney. They don't seem to make understand that you got to pay. You got to pay for those movies. You can't make a movie that doesn't make money, or you don't make any more movies. So when you let actors just roll, I mean, okay, that um, they said 19, when they were doing the, um, the, the road pictures with Bob Hope and Green Crosby, which I actually did some of those things too as an actor, had a floater, you know, but uh, they said that Bob Hope and Green Crosby would change the material. Mm. They wouldn't, they, you know, they would change what was there because they didn't like the line that was there, so they changed the line. And then, because, it wasn't changing what was supposed to be done. The director would give them this, okay, roll it. And then, you know, they say, well, you know, instead of saying, hey, Bob, they say, hey. You know, we give you that instead of, hey, Bob, they go, hey. And, and they, that hey is a lot better than, hey, Bob. Mm -hmm. But that's how you, that's what a director's supposed to do. He's supposed to control it. But Mr., I think they said, Oren Moverman doesn't believe in controlling what's going on. Which is really, it's a crappy looking movie too, folks. It looks like it was shot with a box brownie camera. <laughs> so, okay, the most of the reviews I've seen, okay, um, I don't know, I go down this one, I don't know how far I gotta go down, sign something, I know, um, we ain't made like we just went into a nothing greater. What are, you, what are you saying? This is shot like an independent? Uh, okay, go. Cool. Basically, uh, it was shot like it was what it was. It was an independent. Okay, but the, here's the truth is that um, Woody Harrelson did not like the movie when he saw it. Flat out. That is what they're saying in Toronto. Well, I have, I have some experts here from <laughs> comments about the movie. But it changes when Mr. Harrelson, this is an Academy Award winning performance. You know, after I looked at that movie a second time at the film festival, I really understood that why people would like this movie. You know, he really hated it. Uh, you listened to him speak last night. Well, and if he, you listen to him in the Q&A, he basically said, I didn't glean any rhythm to their banter when he was talking about the police. Yeah. And then he said, the principal problem was believing myself that I could be a cop. Yeah. Um. Okay, we're going to pay attention. You want to see Woody Harrelson's character in the movie and how he speaks when he's being, uh, when he, when he's getting, uh, when he basically knows he's in trouble. Go look at Jack Webb and Dragnet. Overly long pieces like a jailhouse lawyer. Oh, him. like when he was with the DA. Yes. G. Buscemi and, he, and, and Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, he's going into great detail about things, but it's just like all of a sudden he becomes uh, he becomes the ultimate spokesperson for the police department. I mean, he is, you know, you know, we, we have to be on the street to protect the people of this city against the crime element. 24-7, we do our job. And people like you are trying to prevent us from doing our job. Except he does it with a far more forceful. It's like, it's, it's a Jack, Jack Webb's rhythmic thing. It looks like what he did was he picked up Jack Webb's rhythm when Jack Webb would give one of the great big speeches that he'd give. You know, that we are police officers, ma'am. We are here to serve you. 
you know, and uh, <laughs> then you can hear the voice, the sound of dragging it right after that, right? <laughs> and then, the, I think, no, but um, Harrelson didn't. Harrelson, I think, he said he likes to take roles that basically challenge him, but he doesn't like to work. Period. So he's working, but he's working. He, he, you know. I, I, he did this one because it was a thought. What, what it was was an opportunity to do the movie, to do a second movie with the same people he worked on with a previous movie that was received well for him. Well, I would say, from my standpoint, he dropped 30 pounds for this role. So I know a lot of actors and actresses, they don't really like to have their weight go up and down. Well, no, but he does, he does. They'll do it, no, but he 30 looked, pounds is a lot. Well, he looked he, far healthier. He, he did, he looked, he looked been, great. He in far better shape because he wasn't running. It was an athletic role. And they did show a swimsuit, uh, not a, a swimming pool scene. Yeah, they did show a scene with him laying on his tummy with a little bit showing him himself. But, uh, but, um, but it is, uh, it, listen, no further, okay, what the people on the movie thought, that he's basically, he's, he's really an icon. You, like, you wind him up and he does exactly what is required for the role. Because he oh, is yeah. a, he's sort of like a chameleon. He becomes a character because we're left watching him on the floor at a Q&A and what's he, he looks like he's totally detached from the world. Mm -hmm. And then he comes up with, you know, all of these funny, you know, funny, I, mean, I could tell you something that I heard him say elsewhere, which we can't unfortunately because we've already got in trouble on one review. It was really funny where he's with a whole bunch of guys and makes a comment. Oh, yeah. well, he did. He did mention that his friends were basically saying, "I can't wait for you to finish this movie," because he said that while he was doing, he felt he was like in a perpetual feeling of paranoia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the character, and what else he said? Oh, yeah, it's weird. A lazy hippie playing an energetic cop. Yeah, he said, "For Christ's sake." That's what he calls himself. Yeah. He said, "For Christ's sake, I live in Hawaii." Yeah. Which, who would have played? Mr. King better, George Clooney, are the man from Hawaii that knows what it's like to live in Hawaii, oh, no, that and that's a great actor. That would have been mm -hmm. I think he would have nailed it a little bit better, oh. because Clooney uh, doesn't have the comedic ability that Woody. Woody's got that ability. So that when he Clooney, can, Clooney does have some, but it's not. It's not the no, same. No, but Clooney. Okay, Clooney is basically uh, is an actor that does melodramas, whereas. Uh, uh, Woody Harrelson can do. Uh, Woody Harrelson is a throwback to the actors, you know, the Jimmy Cagneys, the the uh, the Cary Grants, the mm -hmm. the uh, actually Edward G. Robinson, who basically could do. You, you toss comedy at him, these guys could do. Flat, they could do slapstick comedy. Harrelson can do slapstick. He basically, he can go from straight, straight, very serious to all of a sudden cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. It just switches. Yeah. It's just that quick because he is a he is a rounded actor, which is sort of funny if you see the characters that he played when he first started out. But he is a very rounded personality, and he he, he looks like he disattached from everything, and then he's listening to everything. If you look closely to him, he's listening. Mm -hmm. uh, like the uh, Ben Foster, who's next to him trying to find a bottle of water, you know, which he put in his pocket instead of setting it. And Harrelson just reaches over, takes the bottle of water, and sets it in his lap. That's mm -hmm. He's, he's not paying any attention, but he's paying attention to everything that's going on in the room. Everything. Which is, which is why he said, it, it's a, I mean, it is like a tour de force for his. It is his movie and no one else's. That's absolutely true. Yeah. I also noticed that there was a lot of, uh, for camera angles, there was a lot of extreme use of close-ups. Yeah, she, she thought it was very irritating use of cameras. I, I... <laughs> Okay. Well, oh, part of it, when I say extreme use of close-up, I'm talking about a person's from the top of their nose to their forehead was the entire screen. Yeah, no. Uh, in a theater. Okay, what? Well, or noticed, their face was the entire screen. And she notices sometimes the camera was very steady and other times it was not. But like I was explaining, you have two, you have, you have, they had two cameras and I'm assuming they had two different cameramen. And what happens was each camera had its own style. But the... Um, uh, but okay. it wasn't like a consistent, like every time there's a writing scene, okay. it's handheld, right? But, it, no, but it's, like I said, it was two different cameramen were doing the same scene in, from two different... Okay, each cameraman brought his own you know, idea of what it should be done. One is more steady, but we're going to try... Um, the, okay, she, so this is... I'll get this thing off. Because, um, uh, actually, I, I should have it on. We're, we're, we've got... Um, we've got John Wayne... We've got... Um, a Henry Fonda, 
you know, uh, doing basically the, the Oxbow incident. There's one scene in the movie, this is where it started this stuff. Henry Fonda has got his hat down like this, but where Harrelson's not wearing a hat. But, and the whole thing is basically, we're going to try something. You know, all you see is, he's got the a shoulder, this is all you see, and to be or not to be, and that is the question. But it is noble to suffer the things in those outreach of fortune, or to take arms against them. It's all, it's a, it's a trick, it's basically, um, it's, a, it's a thing to where they focus you, they're focusing, they're wanting to focus you in this area mm -hmm. only while he's speaking. So it basically intensifies what he has to say because he's acting with his eyes. And it's, it, it's such an extreme use of close-up that you're thinking, well, what are they trying to tell you? Like, take a close-up look of what's actually going on? Yeah. Because I, it was used so noticeably It, it so was much. done too much because yeah. in, okay, um, I remember um, they were saying, okay, like, uh, they, they used uh, Harry Morgan, you know, that was, you know, the, the Colonel Potter on MASH, they used his shoulder to hide his face. It was done for effect because they just wanted, they just wanted the piercing eyes, but only done once in a movie. You only do it once, the effect only works one time, but they just, there was a lot of it, too much of it. A lot of there, a lot of, like, from here. Yeah. I understand, when you're in the police, when you're, they're riding in the police car, yeah. right, and you have the head. Yeah, right? but, um, but it, it, like, it just, it was done for effect because, this is... It's a style. It's a their, style. their style. It's their style, and they used it, they all went overboard because it is, um, um, it's just, you know, uh, it, it's a disentachment of trying to show that basically he is the focus, he is the only focus, they focused on him continually, there was a more, you know, uh, when he's having a good time with the women, the camera's still on him and not the women. It's yeah, him. which is really kind of unusual. It's him. Even though they said that it was a macho movie with a great emphasis on the women, it's his emphasis on the women. The women basically have no real... Okay, um, I could cut cut the first part, cut the first 15, 20 minutes out, cut every scene that he is in with the women except when he's with his children. Mm -hmm. Throw them all out. That's not needed. You know, like him trying to explain, yes, I did do everything. They, they said I did. That's, that's all that's required. Children basically don't care damn about him. It's still their dad. Yeah, so um, he, they're just there. I mean, they're an unnecessary part of the movie because you tell the story about a guy, okay, uh, we'll try it, you know, I'm going to bring it to a bit. We're going to try it from my father's point of view as a, as a police officer. It's not the crime that gets you in trouble, it's what happens after the crime. Woody Harrelson kept doing things in order to handle what he did. I mean, he, he went from being, you know, uh, one cop to basically a really, really bad cop. I mean, the guy is strong-arming people, which they do, but he's strong-arming them continually. Towards the end, he kept strong-arming them more. And, and you know, he, he, and he's got no friends in the department because he just simply will not quit. No. So, I mean, it's just a, it's a downer movie, total downer movie. There's nothing redeeming about it. But you see Woody in an unusual role for him. Well, yeah, but, um, but the problem is is that Woody Harrelson is a good actor. He, he, it's, a, it's an unusual but not an unusual role. It's basically um, Woody Harrelson likes to push the boundaries of characters, and this one let him... And he did. And Woody Harrelson does not particularly like the police, which is why it's unusual. <clears throat> but he is... He's an actor, and an actor is paid to act. It's just, I mean, look at the, uh, the, the little girl, the Marie Larson explains the whole, like she never worked anything like this because she, the other people, the other two actors, they're all, they knew what she was talking about. She said, you, uh, you, you, you hear about a part, you know, two years back. You go in, you go in, you interview the part for the part. A year later, they tell you you've got the part. You show up on the script, you show up on the set, they tell you what day you're supposed to be there, what time you're supposed to be there, and what the scene is going to be done, and then they tell you to leave. That's not how this movie was done. They said after they told you to show up, they told you, do it. And do what? What? 
you know, and, 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 you know like, and then the other, the other guy, I think, yeah, that's that's how this movie was done. One, one. Okay, uh, you and the, you and her are gonna sit in the kitchen and do girl talk. What do you want to say? Or just to yeah, and then for hours they do girl talk, and then it wasn't even in the movie. Was not in it. Wasn't scheduled. And they put it in the movie anyway because they liked it. But um, that's um, that's how acting is done. Is that uh, well, we'll go back to the descent. As George Clooney said two years ago, I, I got you know, the guy said, "How would you like to do this?" And he said, "Well, you know, the guy had never had his, you know, he's a great writer and stuff. I well, can jump at it." And then I, so he jumped at it before he even saw the script. Then he saw the script. And, oh God, I really want to do it. And then I, that was two years ago. A year later, then they made the movie, and uh, that's the, that's how movies are made. Some of these things. Uh, I did a thing with Orson Welles. It took ten years to get done, and he had to call. You know, like he called people because he 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 basically ran out of movie, come back, and you know, and uh, I, I do remember he said, um, "You've changed." I said, ten years later." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, ten years later. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't dawn on. Okay, when a director is in his zone, it doesn't and, dawn on them that you know, as it takes longer to get the movie, you the may. Law. Change, especially if you were a teenager. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're you're no you're you you're, hey, you know, hi there guys, and then all of a sudden yes, and your voice is much deeper, uh. and you're speaking with that deeper voice, and you've put on about forty pounds of weight between that one and this one, and he said, what happened to you? I'm thirty years old. <laughs> thirty. Years. I think I started out when I was nineteen. I'm thirty years old now. That happens. And he said. I love this one. I do remember. It does. You know, like he's in a mystery. You know, you get older. It so didn't you're not frozen it. in time like you're frozen in the No, scene. but that is a director that is in the zone. Mr. Oberman, uh, Mr. Moverman, is it probably, he's really good at what he does because he makes art movies. Mm -hmm. And, and you can see it's just, they don't cost a lot. They usually make their money back. But he, he, he has no zone. He has no no zone. He's letting the actors run wild, and running wild is what they're talking about. Harrelson Harrelson talked about it. That Moverman basically didn't. Okay, they called Woody Harrelson a true icon, and the chance to work with him again was a special moment for them. The producer though wasn't quite as kind as the director, who wouldn't tell Harrelson that he was doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. He just said no. Not, not any, nothing more than no. <laughs> yeah. So that was that. Carol said, "Well, that that was that." We, it,